Right, stop, 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 lads, lads, come on. Right, everybody, good evening. Welcome to episode five of Pitch and Paul Talking Balls. Um, this week we have Dan back. Welcome back, Dan. Been missing Cheers, for a boys. couple of weeks, but he's managed to make it tonight, so great to have him back, Lan, the man behind Table Tennis Daily. Um, we've got the legend that is Liam Pitchford. Wearing a terrible T-shirt, I must add, but he is a legend in the in yeah, the sport yeah, of table that. tennis. And <laughs> you'll never walk alone. Um, myself, Paul Drinkall, and then this week we're very lucky to have a special guest in Johnny Cowan. Um, he used to be the marketing manager at Everton Football Club and now works for International Table Tennis Federation as the European marketing manager. I believe, Johnny, if I've got that right, Yes, thanks guys, yeah. good to join yeah. you guys, I've seen you last few weeks, great show. Thank you, we hope we can live up to the expectations and, and make you look good this week, not that you need any help. I thought, I thought you just got me on to sing along with Liam. Whoa, yeah, no, God. that's it, no, get out. Oh, the internet connection's <laughs> going, lads. I can't believe we've got two Liverpool supporters. And you'll never walk alone. You'll what is going on, Dan? We should have thought through. We're going to lose. Literally. We're going to lose all viewers immediately. <laughs> Who do you support, Dan? Oh, you won't even know the team, Charlton Athletic. Okay, I've heard of them. <laughs> okay, that's I've heard the end of that. Them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were in the Prem at one point. We were. Hey. Well, yeah, we were. JC Where are you now? League One. Championship, championship, we're in championship. Cha- I don't even support anymore. Championship. I just follow okay. table tennis. You see boys. that when they're in the Premiership, he supported them. Now, oh, no, yeah. not interested. At least I'm um, from. At least I'm from there, Liam, good man. Good to see the Sorry, shirt I'm just on. Just trying to. Yeah. So, yeah. as we do normally, our tradition is: what are we drinking? Johnny, oh. we'll go with you first. Guess what you got? I was following your lead from the last couple of weeks. A cup of tea here. There we go. That's what I oh, you're following the Liverpool that. lead, of course. <laughs> um, I've got a coffee myself in a very special mug. Look. Oh, lovely. I've got a, I don't know, Rubicon, spring water, sparkling spring water with fruit juice, strawberry. Is that juice. a new sponsor or something, Pitch? No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> no it's fucking Rubicon. It's, yeah, yeah. it's lovely stuff. Boys, we started out this podcast drinking beers and all sorts, so I've stuck to the yeah. tradition. Everyone's gonna get, I've that. got a copper bag, a cider. Oh, big mm-hmm. time. In, in that yeah, special glass. Every, every time <laughs> like you drink that, I don't know what that is. It's a gin glass. That's a nice glass, though, that. Yeah, it's even got. La- yeah, actually, I've got the ladies' version. Yeah, so you know, ladies, yeah, that's all right. It's that's all shocking, right. really. You get a haircut soon, and then you can change it. Wolverine. <laughs> I really thought Johnny would have a beer going on. You know, big glass of beer. Yeah, he's very professional, Guinness. though, Johnny. Yeah, I did. A, I got the running all in today, guys. I'm trying to, you know, trying to keep keep a bit of focus going on while we're in this lockdown. Or um, where we're coming out of this lockdown. Are you in? Are you are you into running? Are you? Or yeah, do you have to yeah, force I, yourself? Um, did I did a two marathons so far in in the day? I've done about I don't really? know twenty twenty two halves. Oh wow! So you are into wow. running. It's it's yeah, not a just a uh, like not I the run last because I, years, I have to say uh, running after yeah. running after things at an event. That's what I've been doing. But um, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Getting fit at the good events. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, like so like we're out. gonna go into again another tradition of ours: the fast five questions. I believe I'm asking Pitch first. Oh, again. So, um, Poor Pitch mean again. Pitch always gets shafted during these things. I've, I never shaft yeah, anybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one that's been yeah, shafted so on this. Get ready. Right. So, Pitch, very easy ones this week, and they actually are. So, are you ready? Yeah, <laughs> born ready. <laughs> right, Buzz Lightyear or Woody? Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Uh, Fortnite or FIFA? Oh, I get. I hate FIFA because it, I get raging at it, so I have to go Fortnite. You get raging at that <laughs> as well. They can't tell me that you can when you're playing that. No, but no, FIFA get proper rage though. Like a very controller rage. Like. <laughs> right then. Win easy or win ugly? Um. Win ugly. Win ugly. Mm. Whiskey or gin? <sighs> Whiskey. I thought that one would be a bit tricky for you. <laughs> um, yeah. And the, the next one is, would you rather, if you could choose between the two, 
Liverpool to win the league or for yourself to win the European Championships? Oh. Well, Liverpool have just won the league, so I don't have to <laughs> worry about that, pal. Um, no, again, again, because obviously that's fluke with the coronavirus and stuff. Ah. Obviously, everybody got, <laughs> everybody got thrown off the stride months ago because of this, and then yeah. you know they managed to sneak it at the end. Yeah, um, I have to say myself to win the European Championship. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. I was worried about your answer to that one, if I'm honest. That's a that's a great question. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it would have been even better if we hadn't just won the league. But... Yeah, yeah, it's poor time. <laughs> it's not over yet. I'm sure there's something that can happen to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure there is. I've been searching for different ideas that I can come up with. To <laughs> try and... The singing has started, Paul. The singing has started. Oh, hello. Right, pitch to Dan now. Right. <laughs> Here we go. This is payback. Time to get revenge. <laughs> Well, now I've got to ask him like what square root of pi is or something after he screwed me on that first one. <laughs> no, um, right, lager or ale? Oh, yeah, ale. I'm enjoying that. Um, Timo or Offjaw? It's, it's they're nice. both his friends, Liam. They're both yeah. fantastic. Well, anyway, you got to pick one. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to go for Timo just for the longevity of him. You know, yeah. Dimitri's still got a chance to become a Timo. Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Coca-Cola all day long. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, I've gone for this because it's a big discussion. Marlon or Jan Ove Valner? Yes. I'm asking that to Blimmin' Johnny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to <laughs> answer it. Um, Great moments think alike. Yeah. I'm going to go for Marlon. I think he's like, he, he, I don't know, he's, he's good for the sport right now, you know, in terms of, I don't know, he's tr- changed the game. I think he's really... I mean, yeah. I, I know Walton did, but Marlong is just a machine, man. Like, yeah. yeah. Right, Marlong. Yeah. Maybe because I'm in this era as well. Walton, maybe if I lived in his era, I'd just probably said Waltner. So, but Marlong. Right. You just needed one, one name then, but... <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a... You know what I'm like? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Quick fire. Yeah. Night in with the missus or night out with the lads? Every time it comes back to the missus with me. <laughs> Every time. You know what? It's gonna have to be out with the lads, man. I'm, I'm on. <laughs> oh, Dan, good lad. <laughs> this is not out of you, Pitchford, all day long. We'll have to get it sorted. Have you been out with him yet, Dan? You no, won't be I saying haven't. that after you've been out with him. I've heard great things. <laughs> all right. Was that five? Was it? Yeah, that's five, mate. We know if you lose you, Dan, you've been switched off at home. Your internet, that's your digital life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's on his own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, you right? Let's go. F- first question in. <laughs> Pitch or pull? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you in Pitch has got the Liverpool top on. Yes. Whoa! And you'll never walk alone. <laughs> so is that your answer, Johnny? Oh, are you? I was getting that. <laughs> Fantastic. Middles for Paul, right? Yeah. You're not who are you who are you follow. Answer the question. Have you answered? Is that is that the? Well, you, it's got to be get, oh. the Liverpool shirt. Come on. So you're going with Liam. Uh, say an answer. He's a United fan, so you can't pick him. Oh, United! It's got to be Liverpool all the way. You'll never walk alone. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Oh gosh, love it. So um, I'm not talking to you next time I see you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> World tours or grand smashes. Grand smash all the way. Here we go, guys. Uh, uh, Liverpool or Everton? Liverpool. Uh, okay. What do you think was a better era of table tennis? A plastic ball or cello ball? Say that again. Oh, did I go? Plastic or cello ball? Uh, what era did you prefer? What era? Yeah, in terms of... <laughs> Yeah. Did you yeah. which ball did you yeah, prefer? You yeah. yeah. More polluting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Plastic or cell? Cell. Cell you went. Ooh. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm I'm yeah, my last one is Waltner or Ma- Waltner or Marlong. Who? Waltner. Yeah, Waltner. Jano Janove or my long. Good question on the spot. Uh, I think 
I would probably say just sneaking it, I'd say Malong, because he's, he's, as you said, Dan, he's taking things to the next level, but he's also, we're in an era of modern digital online and he, and, you know, his fluent English when he stood up in the Star Awards and all that sort of stuff is massively powerful. So mm. I think he's connecting, connecting the world for the sport, you know, so that access to the Chinese guys and girls and the fans being able to understand them, I think is very, very powerful for the sport. He's a hero. I'd say Malong. Oh, it's my turn now, isn't it? I'm I'm, I'm all relaxed over here. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm fine, and now it's me. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's still recovering from a pitch getting the... uh... Yes, me to pick between my kids, Johnny. Is it some of these guys? Yeah, asking me to pick between my kids. (laughs) I know, I heard, I saw that one. That was rough. Well, mine are straightforward, mate. Straightforward. All right, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Uh, comedy movies or action movies? Oof. Action. Holiday Home or Abroad? What was that, sorry? Holiday Home or Abroad? Um, home. Weekend Vibe on a Friday or a Saturday? Friday. Red wine or white wine? Red. Simple. That one's very easy for me. Sky Sports or BT Sport? Uh, neither. Um, <laughs> uh, Sky Sports, I guess I watch more of. Boom. But, Five quick ones, mate. Um, yeah, they were good ones. Yeah, that, yeah. Sky or BT, we just have free view with Netflix and stuff at home, so... Not really something we have to choose between, but yeah, interesting one that. Yeah, just interesting how they, they both address the pundits and the creative. Yeah, and see, yeah. When you don't have enough background on it. Table tennis, Johnny. What's that? So when you get in covering table tennis. <laughs> we'll all be on, guys, via <laughs> Zoom, won't we? We'll all be doing this. Chat shows around events. Are you guys on the I, I won't be because I've just said none of them. <laughs> <laughs> but who's that guy? He can, do, he can do one. <laughs> right, so Johnny, the, after putting it out online to people when saying that you're coming on and things, um, a lot of people seemed interested in the new uh, Dan related to it in his question there about the smashes and things like that, the new WTT. Um, so firstly, if you can and are willing, just briefly explain to us and everybody watching what, what roughly that is and what it means and some of the changes that will be happening on that, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so World Table Tennis is the platform that we very much hope is the game changer for, for the sport. Um, you guys are, are right at the top of world rankings and world events. Um, You've been at events over the last five, ten years. Um, You know the good bits and the not-so-good bits. And we know how popular table tennis is and and how passionate we all are for the sport. And we really want table tennis to be on a higher platform. We can see what golf are doing, what tennis are doing, clearly the Premier League in football. We can see Formula One, but even we can see these days badminton doing some, some cool stuff. And... And we want to be in that game. We want table tennis to be visible around the world more. We want you guys to be pushed out as stars more. Uh, more content, more social media, better TV coverage, better events, better services for you guys as players at events, better schedules so that you guys can recover quickly, services to help you to recover at events, um, better schedules to promote the sport. So... Um, Liam beats Ma Long and then we have a good 24 hours to promote that that win around yeah. the world, right? Not that Liam has to come back in and play three hours later because not only is that a performance thing for Liam, but that's a fact that we can only promote that for three hours, that the world number one and world champion and Olympic champion has been beaten yeah. and half the world's asleep in those three hours anyway. So we lose all of that media possibility. So it's about elongating that recovery for players but also the ability to market so completely new platform from grand smash at the top uh, through cup finals and champion series four men's champions four women's champions and then into the 
star contender and the contender. Uh, cup finals and champions, one table events. Mm-hmm. So a razzmatazz show yeah. from day one. Um, less numbers of players entered. So it's all about the quality, not the quantity. Do we, so no longer, sorry to interrupt there, but do you yeah. know already sort of how, how many players on each level or in each sort of event will will be happening? Or Yes, yes. So um, Grand Smash, 64 main draw. Yeah. And then there's three different um, full draw uh, qualification that an event can choose, but it has to be ratified by World Table Tennis up front. Okay. Uh, it's not a drip feed of entries and, and, and the entry growing and growing and growing, and then the event not being able to accommodate, whether it's practice tables, schedule. Yeah. Um, it has to be up front plan. So um, 64 main door, draw grand smash, 32 for champions, and 16 two cup finals at the end of the year. So cup finals, a little bit like the current World Cups, but the qualification for that will be through the World Table Tennis Series, so through ranking effectively. So we'll so it'll be through the ranking the through the year. It's not through results of it. Obviously, it's linked, but it's not through. It's not like a Pro Tour Finals now where you get points from each event. It's only through ranking. So well, the world yes, correct. But those will be the ranking will be driven through the World Table Tennis Series through, yeah. and, and other events as well yeah. in terms okay. of world ranking. So, I mean, if you think at the minute as well, it's trying, to, it's trying to make the calendar as well much more clear. So some of these events will be booked in for four to six years. They'll be licensed for, for that period of time. So it means that we can start building the narrative in the year and you, yeah. you players know which events you're going to go to. So tennis knows when all the Grand Slams are. The golf guys know where all the majors are. And what we want to do is try to program things in so that the calendar is much clearer for all you guys, the players, the media, the sponsors, the fans, so that there's much more of a, a knowledge base there. And also that the fact that the, the narrative of the year, who's going to be world number one by the end of the year is a much clearer story. Because at the minute, we get the world champs, we get the world tour, we then have the World Cups around end of February. So hopefully we'll have the two World Cups still in October. They're still due to be on, men's in Dusseldorf. Uh, and then um, they have the World Tour Grand Finals five, five weeks later. So it's a very difficult story to kind of articulate for, for, the, for the media. And also for you guys, you know, you're going to win the World Cup. Are you going to be world number one? Is it going to be World Tour Grand Final winner? It's just not clear at the minute. So World Table Tennis is the way through much more prize money, much bigger events, much more media coverage, and, and really supporting you, you the players, um, to, to be as, as good as you can be, really, and, and really catapult our sport to a place where we all feel it should be. Obviously, like Johnny, it would be a different like branding as well, so World Table Tennis is one of the big things, just injecting more money into it as well. Because all these things, like having physios on site and all these different things, like I'm guessing with this type of brand, it will connect to the bigger sponsors and get more airtime and yeah. Absolutely. So, so what it's been, it's been really interesting period. On one hand, ITTF world, we've had a really tough time. There's been, as you guys know, you've not been playing events. Um, We've not been doing things as normal. Uh, Olympics and Paralympics have moved. World Championships has moved again. Um, no World Tours. Uh, so that's been tough on the business and also for you guys and the whole sport and people earning their money in the sport, players, coaches. But on the other hand, it's actually allowed us to sit at home now and connect to Singapore yeah. and drive all the key strands of the World Table Tennis development. So it's, it's talking to event hosts, all the national associations and also private enterprises prizes promoters like they do in boxing you see Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury it's all through the promoters so we're talking to promoters we're talking to cities we're talking to governments directly because we're going to have a hosting agreement a hosting fee like you see for Formula One or like the UEFA Cup final when a city hosts the UEFA Cup final they have to pay for that privilege because they're bringing the world's best and they're bringing media and fans and everything else okay so there's that strand there's the branding strand. We're going to have a new app and a new website. So we're, I'm, I'm working on the app side and building that new app. We're using a, a company in the US who built the app for David Beckham's Inter Miami. Um, 
We're also trying to work out all of the services that will be required, lights, camera specs, and all that stuff as well to fully enhance the, enhance the events. We're building up the social media plans. So what do we need to sort of push out and what have we learned in this COVID time? What are the fans consuming? What's the best content for them on different platforms? Um, and obviously the prize money is going to be well doubled. It was, it was due to be 13 million US dollars across the 34 plan events, but clearly we're not going to get 34 events next year in year yeah. one. But, but this is a whole tr transition phase into this into this new world, hopefully, where table tennis truly becomes a sport and entertainment product. So I don't know what you think about this pitch, but like, is it more then about sort of TV broadcasting and bringing it sort of to the wider world in that way? Or are you focusing also on trying to make events? Obviously, you're trying to make the event itself better, but you're trying to get people through the door, create atmosphere in the venues, even if they're not the biggest venues. Um, but you know, when you look at, you know, the darts and you mentioned some of the other, the football and, you know, people go there because it, it's a great, it's a, it's a day out. It's, it's an experience. It's, sure. you know, I, I go to ice hockey. It's, it's, it's great. You sit down, they've got like the different music, the different chants and stuff happening like that. Is it, is that a route table tennis are taken as well and trying to make it so that it, it's a, even if you're not into table tennis as such, because for instance, ice hockey and, and boxing and certain, not necessarily, going and darts especially in many ways people go to to enjoy the experience is that Absolutely. something down that route as well totally totally so i think that so, for the players would be it would be really good because now it's kind of like you say liam recently going to a, a few really deep into the tournaments finals and semi-finals but you know there's there's 20 people in the crowd watching yeah. um and although I mean, we definitely think it deserves more than that, but I think the sport and, and even people, what's strange is people who watch table tennis think and believe it deserves more than that, but there's not really anything dragging even them people to watch live. They'd rather sit at home and watch on the streaming or, or something like that. No, totally agree, Paul, you know, and, and to Dan's point, so there, there's investment coming in. World Table Tennis is a separate organisation it's governed by the ITTF, but around that table, I think we're going to be announcing this week or ne or the following week the exact makeup of those those um, partners. We, we're going to have a China partner, and we're going to have a global strategic partner, and it's a well-known sports marketing agent in, okay. in the global market. Um, and we're really pleased about what that can bring. So there's there's that investment side, Dan, to get us building all these key components because it's not just about the events; it's it's everything. And to your point, Paul, absolutely. So taking the darts, even Ali Pali, the World Ping yeah, Pong great, Champs, yeah. where the fans are there, the crazy Irish guys, all my the pals with yeah. the leprechaun hat. I think even World Table Tennis will speak with you guys around the players, around what what can we what can we do that doesn't put you guys off, but that can build that product. So, for example, but, stinging every point. But as well, I think Johnny, I think that. I've heard a lot about sort of player responsibility. And again, Pitch could talk more on that in, in the way that we do have a response to, responsibility to grow the sport if, yeah. if we want to. And, and if we grow the sport, it benefits us financially and everything as well. So surely the play, like for me, you know, this table tennis has still got this name of sort of, Oh, you know, quiet and all this and all, who's that making that noise and like, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. and, and, and I think as players, we need to get over that and it very quickly, you know, when you're playing Olympics in Rio and stuff, pitch, when we were playing there, yeah. it's, it's chaos. And yeah, you can see a few players it really affects, but you know, that's part of the parcel, yeah. I think. And, and I think we as players need to be open our, our eyes and our mind to that. Yeah. One one thing I noticed at T two when they had the kill zone and Paul you played in it obviously it was first to five and at the T two diamond it was insane so when um the final set was uh, yeah to five points one serve each and the crowd were going bonkers even at four all the crowd are chanting clapping stamping their feet during the rally and it was crazy but it it caught a really interesting atmosphere um yeah. How would you, Liam, if you think about Qatar, semi-final, Xu Xin, final, Fan Jindong, if, if the crowd was going bananas 
would you would you be all right with that if if the music was kind of stinging every every point or at least every mm. every towel break or a little a little bit more ambience would that would that help? Yeah, hundred percent. I think, like Paul said, I think you know we have a responsibility to grow the sport, and you know if that means having you know an atmosphere like that, then yeah, I don't think you know like it probably will affect some players, but I'd just say that's part and parcel of, of sport. You look, I mean, you look at football; you've got fifty thousand people chanting. Okay, it's a different environment, but. Yeah, I, th- I think the slight, the slight differences as well with table tennis, I think the big issue comes with it's quiet and then there's a noise or there's a phone and that does put you off. Yeah. But if it's loud, it's loud. Mm. You know, you, 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 you mentally prepare and you get used to that. For me, like Rio, I loved it. I was just having, like, having a party, basically. I was loving life. <laughs> um, but I was like a football I think, atmosphere, wasn't it? It, it really was. And, but I think... You know, I played against Karakasovic and Gao Ning and both of them at points in the game, like you, you they were pulling the hair out. They just couldn't they couldn't get over how loud it was and things. And two very experienced players. But again, they they were two that would really struggle, I think, with that sort of change. Yeah. But again, they've they've had so many years playing how it is and it's quiet and there's one little noise and you know, it's looking at you know, you you make the person in the crowd feel bad for, you know, sneezing. Or whatever they do, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, And I think that that for me needs to change on the the mentality I, from yeah, the players. That's the thing. But it's not going to be like I mean, there, there won't be music blaring like when you're playing a point. So I don't think it may. I mean, no, you crowd. could see. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, just have to get be, on with it, like yeah, it'll be worked through with you guys. But but you know, certainly when it's down when it's the one table event and when it's down to one table, grand smash four tables into one. Yeah. Um, champions and cup finals one table everything is show um, you know you could see stings coming in if you know at the, at the towel yeah. breaks you know like like in handball yeah. and basketball when it goes out you know the music's in yeah um, I think again so, it, it engages and keeps the, the spectators yeah, uh, whether yeah. they're in the in the venue or at home it yeah. keeps things interesting because I do think there's a few too many breaks in table tennis that yeah. either like, people, like, like they don't know what's going on. So, yeah, go on. Go on, yeah. I say like at tournaments now, like if I'm in the crowd watching, it just it gets boring. It does. Mm, yeah. like, I don't know if you, like, I wouldn't, if I'm a spectator, I wouldn't sit there and, you know, for three, four hours and, it's just you know there's nothing going on apart from watching the table tennis. Yeah. I was watch I was watching the football the other day and um you know on the sky you can select if you want the 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 crowd noise on or not right if you have the crowd noise off it's such a boring football match to watch it's so weird but you know yeah. when they've like put the, the the spectator sound in the football match is fantastic. I tell you what I tell you what Johnny that's probably a cheaper option. <laughs> 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 But there's, really, like there's loads of people here. It's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> we've just got a, we've got an interesting question here from uh, Edward John Lynn. I think he's been on a few times. But he said most most players, but most people don't want to pay five pounds to go and watch a session. You know how are we going to fill stadiums? But I guess I mean I just, I think there we've kind of answered that already in saying that you're gonna there's going to be a show. Yeah. Yes. You know. So no, you, you will be wanting yeah, more or willing to pay a bit more because it's going to no, be a show. Absolutely. So one of the other mechanics that we're looking at now is clearly through the qualification couple of rounds is, uh, and, and again, we want all the big matches on TV. So it'll be a little bit like the, certainly for Grand Smash, it'll be a little bit like the uh, Grand Slam in tennis. So there's the yeah. multiple courts and, and they're coming through qualification players. Yeah. Um, but certainly we want to create that show and erasmataz and fun and engagement. So when you get down to the four tables and into the one table, the, the schedule is not going to be 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, we're really going to look from player recovery and also fans. So fans want to be there, maybe a session in the, in the early afternoon, maybe a quick one in the middle afternoon and then into the evening, right? So seven till 10 or something. So just, so, you know, like, so generally, for the past 10 years, you know, you have your set tournaments, say, you know, Hungarian Open in January, guitar, and is that all, 
going to be like, you know, you've got Bulgaria, Czech, are they all going to be scrapped and it's just a totally new sort of host cities? And because I think for me, it, need, it needs to be in, in like capital cities where, yeah, where it's happening. I mean, 100%. you go to, you know, tournaments, you fly there and then you drive three hours to the middle of nowhere. Of course, there's going to be no spectators. Yeah, yeah totally. So, um, we've been working through the national associations because again, World Table Tennis is, is a, a separate incorporated company, but ITTF are part of that and, and can govern that. So we, we still, ITTF still have control. And part of that process at the moment is the last two months, we've been speaking to national association partners. And I've been on a hell of a lot of these Zoom calls with uh, our national association partners to find out which events they want to go for, how they want to shift into the World Table Tennis model. But, but absolutely, Liam, one of the things we're asking is to say, guys, look, if you look at Formula One and you look at tennis and you look at golf, look at the cities that they're in, not only from uh, logistics for you guys getting in and out, but also all the staff working it and the, and the TV. Yeah. Um, think about the uh, audiences that you can get to. So you mentioned London, you know, Team World Cup a couple of years ago. You guys did yeah. a great job there playing, you know, being able to, to your point, Paul, sell a show sell the best players in the world, get people into the sport that may not want to come. They might say, what's this table tennis? What's that loud music? What's this beers yeah. and fun and TTX outside the venue? This is unbelievable. Let's go in and see what this is all about. Yeah. Um, to try to break into the new audiences as well. Capital Cities from a sponsor point of view is, says something in terms of value. Yeah. Um, so the whole proposition is, 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 is changing. So the licenses for the World Tour are, are finished after this year. Um, and, and, a, and a point that I'd like to probably just make quickly is, you know, why, why now? Why this year? And why have we had to go through all these years of frustration a little bit? And it's all linked to sports business in terms of rights. So it's not unlike the Premier League selling the, the media rights and the five billion plus media rights and, and they're divvied up and each of the, I mean, I don't know what the formula is now, but when I was at Everton Football Club, the formula was, was, was a, a similar package for all the clubs. And then you got bonuses based on how many times you were on TV. So Everton might be a club that got around 120 million that year. And Liverpool, for example, might've been up at 150, 160 million. Um, and, and the bigger clubs or, or who was doing well would have got more bonuses. And, and the reason why Premier League can buy all the big players and be such a marketing tool and have all these talk shows and all these legends and pay them decent money is because the rights are driving that. So those sales of media and sponsorship is driving that value. The reality for table tennis is that at the end of this year, 31st of December 2020, the current rights deals that ITTF did four years ago are finished. So basically, we are able to go to the market, which we did in March last year. We went to the global market. Deloitte Sport helped us run the tender. They did the tender for the ATP finals, which is moving from the O2 in London to Turin. They also did the bid for the Rugby World Cup when it was South Africa, Ireland, and France. And the legal firm we used was a firm called Withers, and they did all the deal for Formula One when Liberty Media bought out Bernie Eccleston, who's obviously been in the news this week for not great things either. Um, but we're, we, we went to market to say, dear market, for table tennis, we've got over a billion viewers in 2019, four and a half million social media followers, two billion impressions last year on social media. This is how does that how does that compare? Sorry to interrupt again, but how does that compare with with other sports? So it's, again, looking at you know, you mentioned badminton and boxing and other sports that are doing things well. How how does our viewing figures compare with them? Um, because obviously, if, if they're higher or they're at least there, it'd be such a shame if we're already there at that point, but without the, the things backing up. And obviously, hopefully, WTT can change that. Um, but yeah, where are question. we in terms of other, other sports? Well, I think, you know, most of our audience is in China, right? CCTV, yeah. 80% of the audience, 80% of the sponsors and, and the money and the TV revenues coming from China. That's why in the events... A lot of the decisions around which tables are TV tables is driven by the Chinese players. And, and whilst that's an asset, we know that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a negative. We need to be also investing around the world. 
to make sure players can be in the top 10 from all over the world so that we have, um, you know, Olympic medalists from different countries and and world table tennis. We've managed to, through Steve, chief executive who speaks fluent Mandarin, he's been able to speak to Lu Guliang directly. So the relationship between ITTF and China is, is incredibly strong. In fact, it's, I don't think it's ever been stronger from what I hear. Steve Denton speaks fluent Mandarin, does he? Fluent Mandarin. Yeah. He's he studied in Shanghai and, um, uh, Rachel's wife's from China. And oh, wow. um, so, yeah, so he doesn't, you know, he can just, he can have dinner with Lu Guliang. We heard that China were thinking of probably doing something themselves. So, you know, Paul, you played in T2, uh, Liam, you're out in Japan. Obviously, UTT sprung up as well. And, and yeah. Liam, yeah. were there. So, so it, it proves that these commercial products can exist. Uh, we hear that China were going to do something themselves only for Steve and World Table Tennis with the right cycle coming up saying, actually, guys, we're going to do something globally. And it's all sort of come nicely together because the risk yeah. was that China could have just closed off the players and the revenue mm. and, and the platform for us to grow to grow globally. So, so the fact that these rights are up, we went to market last year for sponsorship, TV sales, data that goes to the betting companies, uh, gaming, Basically, all of your rights was up for for grabs, and and the process last twelve months has been exceptional. And, um, and are you happy say, with where you're at? Like, yeah, I think it's I think it's very exciting. The, the, yeah. the announcement will be either this week or next. Um, Do we not get any uh, yeah. any inside info? Come on, it's 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 one of the unit figures will fly. Just between us, one of the us big. Who yeah. uh, won't tell big anyone? Yeah. It's it's it's. it's one of the big, if not the biggest. So it's it's going to be awesome. Um, Who's the biggest player in that field, Johnny? I don't know. Could you? Well, so you've. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, let's say they're oh. <laughs> very experienced in other sports. So, but the other exciting part of it, guys, is that the the, the old way of doing business is that uh, federations used to give the rights over, and the, and the third parties. I mean. Table tennis has been with Lagadair for, for media broadcast, and it's been with um, Sport Radar, who do the ITTV platform and the data rights. Um, you used to give your rights over. They used to sell it on, and, and you used to get what's called a minimum guarantee. So you'd have got your check every, every quarter or every year, but they'd have been off selling it. The great thing about this is um, it's in collaboration. <clears throat> So if we, for example, if you guys were playing in the semi-final final again and we had a chat with BBC, at the minute we have to go to Lagadere to say, Lagadere, can you speak to BBC and see if okay. you can do a deal? Whereas we're going to be in the middle saying, guys, we need to crack the BBC. What do we need to do to make it? Be- do we need to give it for free? Do we yeah. need to place it? What, what do we need to do to make sure we're getting more coverage? So, so it's very exciting in terms of what we can do with these rights. Um, in terms of comparisons, Paul, I mean, when I was at Everton, compared to the, the World Tour events that obviously go back to China, the numbers are, are ridiculous. You know, the top, the top Platinums, um, you know, you're talking about between 60 and 130 million viewers over a three-day. So we do Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Platinums, yeah. three-day TV. Um, you know, the viewing figures back in the day were maybe yeah. eight, nine million for, for football, for the mid-tier football. I remember the the T two event when when they said about the viewing for that Dan I can't remember if you said but I think the first the first three or four day one was you know like you said up with a of a hundred and fifty million for the in, three in, days in China, now, yeah it's yeah massive and I was thinking TV five yeah that's amazing like you said I suppose it, it's very good but having it at the minute limited almost to one maybe two or three places. Yeah. Um, it's still good having them viewings, but it's, it'd be ideal to to get some some percentage of viewings, you know, from the rest of can, the world as well. Yeah. I guess. Can, I, can I just say on on that point there, Paul? Yeah, because at the moment, um, the reason why China market is interested, probably one of the reasons, is Ma Long cleans up Xu Xing. I mean, Pitchford Liam's took out Xu Xing, which is great. Pitchford and Ma Long. He always calls us Pitchford. by our surnames. This it's because I look up to you boys. Because <laughs> I look up to you boys. You know, but like um, it's Pitch and Paul show. Right, um, that doesn't make sense. It needs to be drink cool. But yeah, um, boys, quickly. So <laughs> if, if every event, like Big Tailton's event, was in London, Beijing, Tokyo, Dusseldorf, um, 
all the big cities, Paris, like it does, like they do in tennis. And then we had people like Liam Pitchford winning the World Championships, uh, Paul winning the Paris Open. Would the sport get bigger? Because at the moment, all the big events are cleaned up by the Chinese. So then our sponsors going to be interested. And yeah, it's good protecting the market of China to keep that investment and money and sponsors because it's like, well, we have to be careful. That's where their income comes from. Yeah. But long term, for example, if the Chinese just weren't competing in events, maybe long term, it'd be better for the sport in the West of the world. Good, good question. So, so definitely, we need, to, we need to use the China revenue finance market, these guys being and girls being superstars, to springboard around the world. Yes. So, so the money that's made in world table tennis, ITTF are a, are a stakeholder in that, in that business. So they will get their returns. That money will then be invested in the sport. So you can imagine some of that money being invested in the high performance side. So, you know, you know, the home of table tennis is a bid that's out at the minute where ITTF wants to build headquarters with training centers, with a full sort of campus of, of table tennis excellence. Um, you can see then the camps that um, Omar Asar came through, Quadri Aruna, Hugo Calderana, all these, you know, that came through, we can, we can then hopefully reach out and, and support more players coming through. Um, but the goal is definitely to have a more variety of, of medal winners. The other thing that springs to mind, Dan, is there will be restrictions on the number of entries from countries. Okay. So in these events, the new World Table Tennis events, it'll be a little bit like the Olympics, where obviously the guys and girls can only have two. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to check it, but I think it's more like four or five. So no longer are we going to see the German Open or the Paris, you said, or a Beijing with yeah. you know 10 or 12 15, Chinese yeah. and 10 or 12 Japanese so that's, that's going to be restricted to be able to allow that growth and progression. The other thing that we're going to have is we're going to have uh, World Table Tennis nominations for the event. So if there's a global star coming through from, a, from a, an area, then that person, player should be involved. Equally, the organizers will have wild cards because it makes sense that, that if there's an, a London event, as an example, that somebody in that market, and at the minute that, that person would be Liam, would be in that event. And if he's, if he's been injured, if you've been injured, Liam, and you're maybe not automatically qualifying through the world ranking or the WTT in the world ranking, um, the, 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 either WTT could nominate you in or the local organizer could nominate you in because it and makes would, sense to connect the media. With, with, and that, with that, would there be a cutoff though, Johnny? Because I think that's really good. But say, for instance, if, if your best player's down at 300 in the world, and then, but your country's holding a grand smash. Um, would they then be put into that tournament as a host player? Um, because, I mean, that player, I mean, yeah, might get a bit of media coverage and things like that, but also might not feel comfortable in that field. Um, yeah. And I've seen that in a few in a few tournaments and things. And again, I, I see why it's done. Um, I'm just wondering if it's always, I guess, from media side, it, it is. Otherwise, there is that no sort of local story, if you like, but... Yeah, I think my understanding is there will be a limit because what okay. we're trying to do is create the best of the best through a really well-understood yeah. pyramid. So if, if, for example, I was, what, 300-odd in the world, if, if maybe that would be the encouragement, or if I got to 200 in the world, maybe that would be the encouragement for Ireland to do a contender event in the new structure. Yeah. yeah. Rather, but not go for a grand smash. Um, mm. But, but for sure, Dan, what we've done at WTT is we've mapped out what, what our wish list would be in terms of where would we want the Grand Smash, where could the champions be, men and women. And we've, we've mapped continents and cities, and now we're going through the bidding. Um, and bid, bids have been coming in all this month. Some national associations and partners have, and uh, private entities have required a little mm. bit of extra time because of COVID. Um, but we then map that against where we think we are. It'll, it'll maybe take three or four years to get really truly ramped running, up, yeah. but, but for sure we need to be in the big cities. I, um, yeah, Johnny, I'm just thinking that in an ideal world, when, when uh, Liam defeated Xu Xing, the, the media world went crazy. It was on the BBC and stuff like that. And then obviously Liam had Fan Zhendong in the final. Imagine if that event was called the London Open. It was in London, that exact same thing. Xu Xing, uh, Liam beat Xu Xing mm -hmm. in the semi-final. 
it would probably get on the BBC main TV, 5 p.m. Everyone's got home from work. BBC main stage. England plays in London. He's at Wimbledon, the Wimbledon table tennis. Yeah. He's in the final playing Fan Jandong. Last, t- last time he played Fan Jandong at the World Team Cup, he was 2-1 up. You know, like, it, then just like one event could just completely change table tennis. I think. Totally. So there, there, there's a couple of strands in that, Dan. One is, as I was saying earlier, the last uh, right cycle, our media partner was Lagadere, and it was done mm. on that. We'll pay you for the rights, and now we're going to go and sell it. And, and that's, that's not being critical. That's just the way the business was done. But I think the world and the landscape with technology and everything has changed. So you'll see a lot of different media deals. We can see Facebook, Amazon, Amazon Prime, all these yeah. players coming into the marketplace. So, um, you know, one of the things is that we'll be able to do that in partnership. So I've, I've, I've been proactively pushing Liam's matches even from Austria into BBC. And the BBC guys are, are really keen. And, you know, are, you're yeah. behind the back shot, Liam. We got packaged up. Lena on site in, in Linz. That was packaged up and sent to the guys. It was on on the Saturday night. I think it was the highest trending video on the Saturday night. And that was in partnership through Paul and Becky at, at Table Tennis England and, and Sarah and Sandra, and then out to, uh, with the BBC guys to try to get coverage and, and get things going. But, um, but we'll be able to do that much more proactively now. We'll be able to say to BBC, you know, what, what, what will it take? Um, yeah. And also we'll have a much slicker, the new, the new strategic media partner will be doing all our TV production as well, as well as all our sort of clipping and the machinery that goes behind all the highlights packages. At the minute, that's produced by quite a small ITTF team, as you know, Dan, because you've been part of our team at the Worlds. But on the World Tours, there's maybe four or five of us working ridiculous hours, 20 to 22 hours a day on these events at the minute to try to do the best for the events and for you guys and for the sport. But we have a strategic media partner sat sat behind us now who'll be doing all that Mm -hmm. volume and quality content for us much more quickly. So they'll be able to package stuff up. and, And as soon as Liam does his interview or Paul, Boom, 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 bang, that's off to BBC, Hugo Calderano, boom, 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 that's package yeah. goes to Global, boom, yeah. boom, Bernie, boom, that's and, off to Romania TV. I, I, guess, I guess over time as well, if if that becomes the normal, then, you know, the BBC or people, like you said, they'll be, they'll be expecting that. Whereas now mm-hmm. I think maybe it's like, oh, it's a bit of a one-off and it arrives mm-hmm. and say, oh, what's this? I don't know. It takes longer to process. Whereas if it's a more regular thing across the world, it'll be, Ooh, yeah. be a thing. There's a, there's a good question as well. Sorry, Josh Band. Um, he said, if it's successful, would it be expanded to team events and Champions League and et cetera? I guess Champions League, obviously slightly different being, being the club thing. Um, but would it be, would it like more, is it going to be into world t- team championships and things, for instance, in, in the future, trying to change the, the setup and system? Good question. Um, so World Table Tennis will also look after the World Championship rights so, so basically, World Table Tennis is responsible for the commercial rights. Imagine the FA at Wembley is the Football Association and Premier League is the marketing machine of the marketing product. Okay, it's a bad example in one way because at times I feel being a level one football coach with 400 kids in our club here locally, the Premier League don't always talk to the FA. So if a player's swearing or doing something ridiculous on a Saturday. I've got the kids on a Sunday thinking that it's okay to do that when when Premier League should be punishing, in my opinion, should be punishing yeah. those players for effing and are coming too close to the referee yeah, and acting like idiots yeah. so that the kids don't behave like that. I think that's one area football breaks down. Rugby doesn't, for example. But table tennis, we have that same capability where you'll have the federation as the governance And then you'll have the marketing commercial machine. So we can go to cities, we can do products, we can do the promo, uh, even almost for the good of the product. Um, So the World Championships will be part of that because it's one of the most successful events. And and it's the one where we've had all the rights ourselves. ITTF has been able to do all that and package that up. So so the goal is to to make make the sport bigger, to push it to the next level. Champions League's an interesting one, Paul. Champions League sits under the jurisdiction of ETTU. And yeah. ITTF obviously working with ETTU and, and I'm working with Richard and Ronald and Pierre and the guys there. Um, you know, let, let's see with the new presidential election in September in Warsaw, um, you know, who's going to come in. But, but certainly the Champions League, I'd be interested to hear from you guys actually on Champions League. 
Um, there's no doubt that Europe has a very specific structure with all the clubs, which I obviously yeah. played in too, not to your level. I played in Germany and France, but um, the ITTF can't do everything for everybody, but there's no doubt that the Europe part needs some, some extra thinking and extra work to make the, to make yeah. the Champions League, for example, stronger. And I don't know what your view, you guys are on the schedule and the busyness. You're trying to do world tour. You're trying to do your nationals. And then you're getting pulled into Champions League, and then Liam, you're getting you you want to go to Japan. So, give us yeah. your view on, on on that. I mean, I think for me, sort of Champions League. Hearing from you know some of the clubs that I've played for, and obviously I played in Champions League and whatnot, um, is that overall it's probably not really worth it. You know, they're having to pay a lot of money to, just to play it, and then. You know, I mean, it's you know, you've got Orenburg, Dusseldorf, UMMC, a few really strong clubs. Um, and even if you do win it, it's you're not really getting anything back. That's what I've heard from a lot of you know club managers and, and stuff like that. So, but I think schedule wise, it's you know, if you're just playing you know your Champions League and your league, I don't think it's a massive problem. It's just probably, is it worth it for the clubs? I think this year, or la, you know, last season, it was definitely a lot weaker than it's ever been. Um, some of the clubs that were yeah. playing, some of the players, you know, I'd never even heard of. Um, and just looking at the scores and the matches, um, they weren't really close. You know, a lot of matches were 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's a lot, teams, a lot of teams a lot of teams now that feel to, a team to win it. Yeah. And there's a lot of teams that look at them, other teams, and think, we can't beat them. Yeah. Um, so they don't pay their best players to go and play against them. They they feel their youth team and things like that. And but it, Not just that. It, I think this last season, a lot of clubs just didn't play it. Yeah. Like, a lot of the German clubs didn't play. Hannibal didn't play. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the French yeah. clubs didn't play because there's no point. You know, they're paying, what, 20, 30,000, and they're getting nothing yeah back even if they win which is very unlikely. Do, do you think obviously like you said there Johnny about uh, ITTF can't do everything and obviously they're doing as much as they can to promote Taylor Tennis from their point of view and, and grow it but do you think this new system will will help the club system especially here in Europe a bit more because me personally I think the club systems they need to start looking more at going to like you know the UTT or how T2 was before so sort of periods through the year like the Chinese league where you do a week or 10 days of of matches together and then you know you go back to international duties and then you come back and again with a with a clearer international schedule maybe that that is more possible but do do you think that the schedule will be harder with the the new WTT if the European leagues stay as they are now or do you think it'll be easier for the players to manage that? I'm hopeful that it'll be easier. So that the, I think one of the challenges over the years has been the the international calendar has been quite tough to firm up and and, and get out there in time for everybody to schedule everything in. Um, yeah. But I think if these multi year agreements are done, we you know we want the grand smashes to to have four big crescendos of table tennis coverage in a year not just our world championships which is probably the pinnacle we want to have four of those around the season which keeps the talking points and the coverage of table tennis buoyant mm-hmm. more consistently across the year mm-hmm. and there's no doubt that the that the i think to your point Liam where will they be and not only the capital cities but but we, we've also brought on a guy called Stephen Duckett, who's worked for the last 10 years with ATP and WTA. Um, I should mention also, we're working with a guy called Philippe Lefloc. Philippe left FIFA as the chief commercial officer last year in October. So he was responsible for the 6 billion revenue of FIFA uh, commercial monies through the FIFA World Cup. So, And then he also was responsible for some of the Champions League work in the last 10 years. He was the marketing director of UEFA. So we've got that expertise and how do you build a product and how do you become truly commercial? And equally, we've got Stephen. Stephen's working on sort of the swings of the year, like in tennis. Where would we be in Europe? And then where would you go out to Asia? And then when would you go to the Americas to make sure yeah. that you guys aren't going to be stretched from pillar to post? Um, a little bit like in tennis, where, where clearly they wanted to keep the, the, man, the ATP final in Europe because the last 
I think the last event is the Paris Masters. Yeah. And then, of course, they need, that's why London was such a strong bit of the O2, because the players are still in Europe. Yeah. So I think that was one of the selling points for the likes of Turin. Um, and Manchester was in, in that process as well, interestingly. Um, so it's, it's all about understanding the travel and not making sure that you guys aren't going pillar to post. It's also about you guys not necessarily playing more events. I think the pyramid will be more defined. So players won't feel the need to be chasing chasing all the events. Mm-hmm. Um, equally, players won't be able to drop down. So, so you can't have the top guys and girls hoovering up the world ranking points and the prize money. You're going to have to be a little bit like tennis in the different tiers. And me at Ireland, 300 plus in the world, I'm going to have to get up from from contender to star contender to yeah. get up into, I'm going to have to work to get, to yeah. get myself up. So there. how, how does that work? Like for me, for instance, I'm, you say 64 on that. Was it the smash grand smash yeah, tour or something? Top right. 64. So at the minute I'm just inside that. So is that four events then that I can play or how, what, what's that? Do, can I then drop into some of the other ones or how, how does it really work? Yep. So you'd be you'd be yep, fall into that. You're fifty five, right, in the world. So with the restriction also of the the nationalities, four, for example, in each, yeah. I think it's four or five, that starts to push down the ranking list, right? Yeah. So you could Might see be top thirty two. Get up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So so that'll then filter down. So you're probably getting down to the sort of seventies, eighties in the world, yeah, okay. making that top sixty four. And then it's for the event to decide whether they want to do a, six, a full 64 qualification uh, through that. Out, yeah. out of the 64, I think it's proposed that 50, 50 would be, would be um, direct. So, Paul, at the minute, let's say you'd probably just be outside that. Yeah. But then there'd be, there'd be qualifications through, and then there'd be wild cards from WTT, and there would be wild cards from the local organizer. So if it was in yeah. London you know, for 100%, you'd, you'd be in there through whatever route. Yeah. Um, Are the qualification yeah. events elsewhere then, to that main event? At the minute, it's an, it's an option for, for the organisers to do something a little bit different. But at the minute, the way things are structured, they're all, they're all in a similar place. So, I mean, golf, for example, if you want to get into the Open, you can play, you play the, the Irish Open, the Scottish yeah. Open, if you want to then play the British Open. It, it's something we've looked at. It's just the logistics and the costs of, of putting high quality events in place. It feels like we'll still follow the same sort of model where we're in, we're in a city for, for a week. Grand Smash wants to be 10 days. So again, a little bit like the Grand yeah. Slams. Um, just coming yeah, back it, Paul, it, into your point then on the, on the windows, we want to have windows where players can recover and also yeah. where players can play Champions League or national training camps. We want the calendar to be much more about developing the sport. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because at the minute it's crazy. I mean, even for us at the events, we're here, there, and everywhere. Uh, And Dan, you know, you've been in the media and the mix zone and the practice hall, Mm. and these guys are traveling and playing. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. I remember, remember, like the World Team Cup. That's probably the best event I've ever gone to in terms of spectators and what happened. Like it was amazing with the England lot did so well and playing China and. I mean, there was four thousand people watching, but I remember you guys were all exhausted. The ITTF lot and that, and straight after, I think it was potentially the China Open or something. So, like you know, in the tennis world, you'd never get Wimbledon, and then all that crew having to go from there to then China and the players as well. So mm. it's like, yeah, it's mental, really, when you I, think about it. I think in other sports there are options. Like if you look at the tennis players, they quite quite often they are jumping from place to place, but it, it's almost it is an option. Um, mm. And it's, you know, sometimes they say, you know, let's chunk a few together here. So actually we can use this as preparation. We can use that as tuning up after that event and things. But you have your clear set, like Johnny was saying, in our case, smashes. And you know where they are, you know where they stand. And then you put the different events around that. Mm. Um, but like you say, I think at the minute, it's you've got one big event. You've got the China Open and then you can get on a plane straight over to Japan Open. And then you can go straight to the Korean Open. Um, and then I think Australians now linked into that as well. So it's, you know, you've got four or five weeks of big events on, yeah. on the trot. And I think, like you said, for everybody, for media, players, coaches, physios, everybody, you know, that, that in a way is too much to get the best out of everybody throughout the year. You know, you can even, you know, after that one period, the rest of the season then becomes very difficult. So even if you do well in that one period, 
you know, the next two or three months can be very hard to then still be up and, and ready to go for, for different events. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any questions on this Pitchford? You sat there in your Liverpool top, very relaxed. Killing out. You just remember the win. All in. <laughs> Being champions for 30 year wait, mate. I'm just taking yeah. it. Been a long 30 years. It'll, it'll be another 30 years no, after I this, I think. I've so got a, a question sort of around that world ranking. Is it going to be the same system as it is now? It'll, it'll have to keep evolving, I think, Liam, for sure. Um, they're, they're working through the world ranking as well. Um, yeah. I think what they're conscious of, it's got to be, if I'm 300 in the world and I'm at, at contender level, I, I have to be able to be world number one. Yeah. The system has to allow me to get from first, first event to world number one. It, it can't be that Liam Pitchford at 15 in the world, that you're, you're playing the events with more points and I can never catch you. Yeah. Um, so, so will the has, will the T two situation change then, or how will that be looked yeah, at? T two is an interesting one. Yeah, that's because we talked about that, yeah. Liam, didn't we, in Qatar? Um, yeah. I mean, it just how did that even possibly get signed off? Mm. I match? think T two T two is a great event, isn't it? No, it's I'm something that's really event. good for table I'm tennis. But I'm talking about yeah. it for it being the world ranking. So yeah. yeah so is, let. Yeah. So now I'm ranked 15 in the world. There's players in front of me that have, that played, you know, two T2 events and got extra bonus points. It's, it's yeah. literally impossible for me to catch them. Yeah. yeah, just explaining that. Like, obviously, we use our eight best events, but if you qualify for T2, then they count as an extra event. So you're extra obviously two. doing well. And then, yeah, extra one or two if you qualify for both of them. And that's actually if you don't qualify for them, then, you know, it's, it's tournaments that you can't possibly play. So you can't, you can't gain them ranking points. So like Liam said, he's, he's sat where he is, but you know, he's got to get unbelievable results. And, and even then, I mean, you've got unbelievable results. Mm. And like you said, you, you still, you're still like eight, 900 points behind people. Yeah. And that difference is T2 really. Yeah. But like yeah. how, how, you know, I just don't know how how it's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah, I am. Like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I remember talking. I mean, uh, because it's not even it's not even a proper like event. I mean, it is a proper event, but it's not yeah. proper matches. You play twenty four minutes. If you don't finish the match yeah. in that time, you play first to five points, mm-hmm. and yet it's a world ranking event tournament. Yeah, yeah. So my 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 view on it is that in in a in a world where the ITTF a sports world tour was arguably not paying is not paying enough for you guys and girls, the players, then I think it's natural for players to want to go where the money is. So Mm -hmm. that then shows you that a UTT or a T2 is a product that comes into the market and can start to cause great opportunities, but actually it starts to cannibalize the whole raison d'etre of your sport. Because, of course, T2 would come to ITTF and say, we're pumping all this money into table tennis. You need to give us world ranking points or we can't get the best players or we can't get the players. We can't get players that we would like to have, as an example. But then that starts to, as you say, Liam, starts to completely under undervalue the overall system. So that's where well, world table uh, tennis would- wants to create that stronger system which says world table tennis this is this is the world tour this is the new series yeah. of the world so i think the, the less other products this is our chance to say we're doing what we've been trying we've been wanting to do for years and do it full power yeah and these other products whilst they're good for table tennis because they're cool they're new they're innovative they yeah. give players new opportunities you get you know earning potential but actually there are some issues with them as well and I think you're yeah. highlighting. You're highlighting I, I, think, I think, like you say, I think there, obviously, I don't know how it's going to be in the future, but a possible way to reward the people who qualify for T2, because like you say, they've qualified. Everybody's kind of had the opportunity to qualify, but is maybe have a point system so that if you then gain more points than your, your eighth tournament that you currently have, you then get the difference. But, yeah. so, so it's not I mean now they've got you know almost 10 events 
So as like, like Liam said, it, you know, it's it's almost impossible for him to catch some of them players. And that's, think, as as you've been saying, you want to try and stop that happening, I guess. So I think another thing that you know about that. So after you know they had three, you had three tournaments to qualify for the first T two event. I think it was. I don't I can't remember which tournaments it was. Um, and then you know the next tournament was the next three tournaments that counted for that qualification system. So everybody, you know, all the players that, that I spoke to thought, you know. So you have your point system for the first three. Yeah. yeah. And then you start again. Everybody starts again from zero. Well, I think that was the plan, wasn't it? For the next three. And then suddenly, after the first one, whoever qualified, I just missed out on qualifying. I think I was first reserve or whatever. Um, and then suddenly, the points carried on. So it was literally impossible. Yeah. You know, all those players that qualified were basically qualifying for main draws anyway. So got gained you know, a certain amount of points guaranteed. It was, it was, you know, for the players lower down, it was almost impossible to, to catch and play those tournaments. So it's kind of unfair. And if you look at the ATP and the WTA, you know, the men and women in tennis, that's, it's the ATP and the WTA. That's, those are the tours. If you're yeah. in the ATP finals in London or WTA finals in Singapore, that, that's what it is. Well, I think, I think World Table Tennis ITCF will, will have to look at some of the continental events, you know, Europeans, where does that fit, and Oceania. And, but, but this whole idea, Liam, of, of, a, of other products shooting in and being able to confuse or, or, or mess up or somehow, you know, we want to we wanna be more clear on like an ATP WTA. Um, yeah, like, that's I think... why we see World Table Tennis pushing this through to, to the new pastures. Yeah, I think, like you said, from the players' point of view, spectators and everybody, media, it, it, to clear things up um, and make things more simple. Yeah. Um, again, not easy. It's, it's harder, harder to actually do that than just talk about it. But and maybe I maybe other events become like invitationals or something. You know, the, the, yeah. the Federer's and 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 yeah. Nadal's and Rory McIlroy's and Serena Williams and you know they they maybe go to invitationals where they earn. They earn some big appearance monies and, 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 and you know, Tiger Woods skins against Rory McIlroy. Okay, that was for charity and everything else. So, but but your ATP and your WTA or your your road to Dubai and golf, you know, it's very clear. And, and as you yeah. say, Paul, all the stakeholders get it. Players understand from their performance planning, yeah. uh, fans, media, sponsors, you know, we're releasing world ranking updates every week. So there's talking points in the media, not every month. We want a real live system yeah. and it's pushed out onto the apps and the fans can personalize and engage with and we have the data and we can talk to the fans directly and sell tickets and merchandise. Um, yeah. Will the, um, another, another question come in for Alan, Alan Walton here. Um, I've forgotten what it, the official name for it is. Sorry, Johnny, if I get this wrong. Is it TT Review? What's it? TT... Review oh, yeah. or TT review TTR yeah 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 TTR got it right nailed it um yeah. will will that be more of a use thing um oh, or will it is it still sort of being tested or what you know when's that coming in properly or more often basically yeah it's something obviously we see in in tennis and so on and it creates that uh, buzz and energy in the arenas and fans. even that in the shows it's like ooh. yeah 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 so we want again going back to our early discussion we want to try to create some energy points and and so on i mean i think even you, you talked about the kill zone dan i personally again i'd be interested in your views on the point system you know I, i'm quite i quite like the idea of getting to 10 all and and Winner takes winner takes all of that game, regardless of who's serving. Whoever serves serves. Um, or, yes, or, I agree. Or do you do a you do a toss, and it's another moment. Oh, they're doing the toss for who's going to mm. serve. We're not. What we we don't want to make it gimmicky. It can't be idiotic, yeah. and then to completely distract the players. But something that helps with you guys will be in the zone anyway. Yeah. But something that it just might create, create more. It, yeah, it um, might create more upsets as well. You know, if you just have from ten all. I mean, even if. I don't know. Someone 150 in the world played Ma Long 10 or in the first set. There's a much more odds of that guy winning the first set, and then you know it causes something, you know. But that juice is still so tough. The the statistics of players winning at juice is still higher if you're a high level player. But I think at 10 all, you're gonna have more chance of 
a 50 50. There's, there's three things for me one is that energy that you could create that not, not making it gimmicky so the players can still be in the zone two is um the time that you save for players legs so imagine all your 15 13 17 15 20 mm. 18 there may be an argument that says, but that's tension and that's brilliant. But you think over a week of a, of a world tour event, for example, how many minutes the players are playing when maybe they ch- don't need to be playing. And then the third one for me is media selling to TV. I mean, a tennis gets away with it because tennis is embedded in a lot of core sports because they built the grand slam. So BBC will, will, will show Isner's match at 64, 62 yeah, in the yeah. fifth, <laughs> fifth set and it goes on to midnight at Wimbledon and they resume the next morning. And personally, I, I love tennis, but I actually can't watch five full sets of four or five hours of Nadal Federer. Yeah, I just tough. think... Yeah. I think, I, I think the, the one point at 10 all for me would be a, a very interesting change. I think it'd be, like you said, exciting and... And again, it would throw some players off. Some players would be really into it. And again, I think that that's yeah. good to cause that mm. little stir amongst players. I think now it's kind of, again, you know, in a way it's like, oh, the same thing. And the players want to keep the same things and this. And, and the mentality across the whole table tennis community is very much, we, we've done this for years. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but you want table tennis to grow and you want it to keep improving, but you want to do the same things. You know, yeah. them two things they don't really match up. Um, just one other thing. Sorry, Craig Drink. Um, did we answer that last one? Did I'm not sure we answered it fully, did we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We chatting away. I don't know. We, we spoke a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Is everybody happy with what was discussed there? <laughs> I can't even remember what we were talking about. Yeah, you brought up TT <laughs> Reviewer, didn't you? I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, you, yeah, yeah. Anything to create that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you did answer it, Johnny. Yeah, you did, did answer you did. it. You got good yeah, feedback yeah. from the World Tour Grand Finals. Um, you know, <laughs> arguably doing it at World Tour Grand Finals may not have been the best. You know, it's the end of year. It's a big event. Yeah. You know, why wouldn't it have been done earlier? And, and, and the system was trying to get ready for World Table Tennis and trying to do some tests, and it kind of overlapped. Had a, had a good chat with Jean Venet about it, and he had some good views about where the cameras could be. And... It was yeah. great. To, it's always great to talk to people and get insight and, and, and feedback. But I do think we'll do for sure create that energy around the reviews. In, yeah. Mm. Sorry, going back. Craig Dring asked, um, and this, I guess it'd be interesting because at the minute, I don't think there's really stuff behind it. But he said, like, about national governing bodies, um, you know, should they start to market? events that are elsewhere a bit better because for instance him and the guys at the club um nomads they they came to the world team cup because it was advertised and sort of things were um packages were put out there from table tennis england and maybe that is something that ittf and you guys can look at is you know now there's packages for players and for coaches and this that and the other but could it be that you know you have a package that you do send to, you know, the governing bodies that they can then promote within their countries. And again, if there's a big enough show and things like that, I think, you know, they, they will be taken and people will be interested in that. Totally, totally. Great, great question. I actually think we're going to try to go one step further. So we're going to build this app. Uh, so fans around the world will be able to, to download the app and, and we're aiming for, for, um, English and Chinese for the 1st of January because we're building a whole infrastructure on that app. And so on that app, what we'll have is we'll have all the events and we'll have all your guys' profiles and your world ranking and right-handed, left-handed. We'll have the, we're, we're Model shots. Up at the Model moment. shots. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, all of that good stuff. No <laughs> football <laughs> shirts though, Pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I plan to not shirt. shirt on, but okay. <laughs> no shirts. Yeah. No um, shirts is better than that shirt, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's so <laughs> good. Um, Sorry. So yeah. So and, and in the app, um, we wanna we wanna be more fan centric. So we wanna understand who our fans are, where they are, and what they like. So we're gonna try to uh, integrate all of the fan touch points and experiences into one holistic strategy. So if you download the app and, and follow WTT, if you've bought merchandise, we're gonna release some merchandise. Um, whether you follow certain players and personalize your favorite player is Paul Drinkle, Liam Pitchford, 
we'll be able to serve up when those when you guys are playing next or when to follow to, to, to tune into the OTT platform or to your point to buy tickets for events. Yeah. It's one of the challenges we had, if you imagine the last three world championships were in Europe, right? So we went from Dusseldorf 2017 to Hamstad 2018 to Budapest 2019. ITTF had no idea who any of the fans were yeah. because, because the machinery is given to the events and, and Table Tennis England did a great job promoting the Team World Cup in 2018. Um, but ITTF have no interaction with those fans. But what we want to be able to do is say, for example, we, we have the New yeah. World. We want to be able to say, hey, dear fan who went to uh, Dusseldorf and Hamstadt, we're going to do a special offer for you for Budapest because you're clearly a loyal fan. You've been in Dusseldorf, you've been in Hamstadt. We're now sponsored by British Airways and Hilton Hotel. As a loyal yeah. fan, we're giving you a 20% discount on a full package for the week with your flight with your hotel and with, with whatever passes you want, VIP mm. or, or, you so know, you're so connecting directly to the people through the absolutely. app. But like formula one, if you want to buy a ticket on formula one, you can go on the formula one website and, and buy yeah. your own tickets to whatever race. We want to be in that world where we are yeah. promoting everything about table tennis and um, to the yeah. fans. Um, and I guess it links Paul to another question. Ian Michael Ferguson asked one earlier in the week, you know, what about seeing international tournament again in the UK? I guess it's relevant for that question because it's about selling events and connecting to the fans. And, and I agree with the, with the previous question. I think the, the promotion in, in London and England was brilliant and, and you guys yeah. performed really well in, in the copper box. Um, there's no doubt that international events are a real driver for growth of a sport. The fans can go and see the best <laughs> in the world. They can see you guys taking on the best in the world. And, and, and the, one of the goals of world table tennis is to try to grow the economy of table tennis so that more people see the players, see you guys as stars, see you guys earning bigger money than the, than the checks that we see at the moment, which is a little bit embarrassing at times. Um, and then that drives more interest from kids, more interest in the school programs, more yeah. growth in the clubs. Maybe one day we'll be in a FIFA world where FIFA write a check to each of the national associations you know, that's very much a future gazing one where, where wouldn't it yeah. be great if all this revenue and the economy was big, that we were able to, that the ITTF could support national associations with, with investment. But that's, yeah. you know, that's 10, 15 plus yeah. years. Johnny, the, yeah, there's a big discussion right now amongst the whole Facebook community, especially in the UK, and I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of it, and everyone's saying, we need a big national centre in the UK. Now imagine if ITTF was... Go on, Dan. Paul's oh, advocating for that. Yeah. Don't we all want it. <laughs> Is this the yeah, sales pitch? If this is sales pitch, yeah. It, it, you know, technically, if it was, if there was ten of those all around Europe, you're going to have ten Liam Pitchfords consistently. You know, and and, and not sure. You want that, not sure. Not <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yeah, you know, no, you like, certainly don't want that. <laughs> but look, right now in the UK, for example, it, there isn't that. And it, yeah, if if money was put into that type of stuff, like you're saying, once once the ITF does build more revenue. And things are invested in this type of way. Long term, it's going to grow the sport, yeah, and not have kids drop I, out left, right, and centre. Yeah. I think you touch on a on a great point, Dan. And you guys have discussed it on on this show over the last few weeks, and I know other podcasts have 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 brought it up as well. You know, what is the pathway? You know, um, I can only reflect on on two players from 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 Ireland at the minute. You know, Owen and Sophie, who are junior and cadet coming through, and you know mm. what. What what's what do they, what does it look like mm. for them when they're 18, 19 and then 21, 22? What does the training look like to your point, Dan? What does the money and development look like? Because a lot of players drop off either they don't have the performance pathway and you guys described how you went to Sheffield and, and so on and then abroad in your in I think two weeks the show two weeks ago. Um yeah. and then how do they make an how do they make a living? So there's Tintin does medicine medical studies which presumably is to have a career in medicine which i guess in society pays pretty well and how could a table tennis career ever co compare to that or what are the chances of tintin being able to get to that level and mm. you know i think there's a lot of jigsaw pieces to come um together to make those things a reality but the, the first thing is making sure that our top events and our top 100 in the world 200 our, our best athletes can truly be uh, shown in a great light as yeah, entertainment yeah. events, superstars earning good money, 
um, sure. that then more people want to get involved and then that investment needs to come yeah. back around to build that. It almost needs a performance strategy as well. You know, in Europe, where do you go in Europe? You guys discussed it. You go to Germany, you go to France. I went, I tried. Yeah. Um, it would be great to have some high performance center hubs, I think for sure. Um, but you're right in saying that at the moment, ITTF does need to focus on the big events because then it will trickle through then because yeah if you, do, if you focus yeah. on yeah. you can't really focus on the grassroots or the itf can but not as their main business objective really because you need to have you know like you said i think federers. if you've got the peoples and yeah you, you build your mm. from other sports your federers your tiger Woods, this that and the other in the names yeah. it, it can grow that across and and then filter down through the different levels as well but that, that, that's I the goal i mean the itf are, are, are pumping hundreds of thousands of dollars into each of the continents to do development you know the development programs you see in europe and um, Eurostars and um, the, this, the work that nevin does and you know but it's all but all of that doing money is based on the revenues that you bring in. And, and yeah. uh, we are, given our audiences, to your point earlier, Paul, how does it compare? Given our audience, given our reach, I think given the, the level of you guys playing and, and the modern player now and the speed and the power and the fitness and the dedication, you know, we, we believe that we should be in a higher sphere. And if we can crack that commercial show yeah. events model, where you guys become star and it just looks better and it's in all the markets, it's on the TV or it's streamed on Zone, or it's on Amazon Prime or wherever the media strategy takes us, then we can start to really grow the, grow the economy mm. of the sport. And, and then, the, then you need to be investing in the other continents where you need China. You know, you need to be, you need to be taking on China and China understands yeah. that actually as part of this collaboration. You know, the, the, the Yugos, the Liams, the, the, yeah. the Quadris, you know, this this makes it interesting. Um, in the women's game, it's clearly much more challenging with the, the massive dominance of of the Chinese players and, and now the Japanese players coming through. But we're, we're, we need that yeah. money to be able to invest in all that other other activity. And also, I think, like you say, if you if you almost show an example and show the pathway, you know, again, national associations, governing bodies around the world can can see and learn and and sort of bounce off the back of that as well really and use that to to promote then in the home country and and hopefully grow it throughout the world i think is i guess is going to be the the way that people look at it well if you look at the premier league paul you know if you look back at the old footage and, and you know i've seen many things over the last few weeks with covid19 you know the old pit bald pitches and yeah you know you know, there was basically football was just sheds yeah. at the side of, of pitches, mm. um, but they've become yeah, global. Pitch. So I thought he was talking about your your head then, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Good job you're like through a computer screen. Yeah. I, I almost smashed my computer screen then, giving you right up to the face. Or Red Bull. If you look at the big enough stick today. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. You Sorry, at, Johnny. Uh, you're being Johnny. serious here, aren't you? No, no, no. It's, Go it's, on. <laughs> if you look at the Premier League now, it's, you know, everything is commercial. And that's why, you know, even, you know, when I was at Everton, we were branding Finch Farm, the training centre. The facilities for the players were on, was unbelievable. The training pitches were, were like Wembley back in the 80s, 90s, because the, the, there's more ground staff and yeah. the swell of resources that you have. And, and, and then sponsors are attributing themselves to, to training shirts. And the Finch Farm was branded with USM, the sponsor. And all of a sudden, all the assets within the sport become valuable. And, and there's commerciality around it. And there's media around it. Um, yeah. But you could never have done that. And then they've got their academies. And then they're, they're getting the players now younger and younger, of course. And, and I'm not sure that's, that's brilliant in many ways. But um, when you get yeah. that commerciality and money, you can do more stuff. Yeah, it opens more doors um, for you and for everybody else sort of following and trying to get, get up there as well, I guess. And, and we want you guys, because the level that you guys put in and, and our sport, when you see all our clips, and I watched your, you talked about uh, T2 and the kill zone, I think, was it you and uh, was it you and Vladi yesterday? Don't was bring that up again. <laughs> Me and Pitch commentating. I haven't seen the full, the, oh, the version of it. Uh, no, commentary that, was yet, but... that was very good. Yeah, well, 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 
On Johnny, going back to the the app question, uh, Craig Craig Dring came back with that, and obviously is yep. a northerner. So, one thing that he thinks is very important to have on that is also a drinks package. <laughs> so, but again, like you know, it sounds. But I think actually, yeah. why not? You know, like you say, you're selling merchandise and things like that. Actually, these are the things you can drink, eat, this, that, and the other whilst yeah. doing it. You know, Dan's dry there. Um, yeah. I need I need some drink, Johnny. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm get the package. I, th- I think, like you said, sorry, package. I'll be buying the package now. Um, but <laughs> I do, I do think, like you say, it, it does seem to be going in the right direction. And I think, yeah. if if ITTF and WTT can pull it off and and make this, you know, a positive thing for table tennis, I, I do think that throughout the world, table tennis can pick up and and become a more popular sport because it'll be, it'll be seen as a cool thing to do. And there'll be events that, you know, people can go to and, and enjoy. Totally. And, and, you know, not, not advocating necessarily just the drinks packages, but I come from Ireland and and don't mind a glass or two, but, but absolutely, you know, guys, would you go to the races for a day out? Would you go to Wimbledon? And would, if you went to Wimbledon, would you watch from nine in the morning to nine at night? Or would you actually go yeah, and probably would. have a few drinks, a bit of strawberries yeah. and cream, mix yeah. around the, the place? Probably, yeah. you know, you guys would hopefully be stars and be in a stars paddock and you'd be able to talk to footballers, rugby players, see people yeah. off TV pundits. So, so we definitely want to make this more of an entertainment and day out style, a bit like what cricket did with T2 following the, um, the big bash in Australia and clearly the IPL in India. You know, T20 in this country, the, um, the T20 blast was the same thing. Friday night, Yorkshire against Lancashire as an example. Uh, Old Trafford down the road, 20,000 fans on a Friday night. Drinks, yeah. turning a box into the Harvey Nichols experience. So you had uh, girls coming down to have a night out. Music, blasting, beers, fun, entertainment. And you know what? The core table tennis fan will watch probably all of the table tennis. Yeah. Um, and have some drinks, but we want to try to grow the sport. And so if we latch on to the music and the entertainment and the drinks and the DJs, um, a little bit like what a T2 product was starting to do and, and yeah. did, that's where we want to take table tennis in, into the masses and make it a really cool experience where, where maybe if we're in London or Berlin or, or Shanghai or Beijing, you'll have people traveling to these and just having a good time. Yeah. They're just yeah, well, they're they, they can link it up, can't they? So they can link it up, you know. Or you know, I've I've always wanted to go, like you said, to China. You know, what I'll do is I'll I'll link it up with watching yeah. ten days to or two days table tennis, and then head to a holiday, and and that will get people out there because they're going for a, a dual reason. Yeah, no, exactly. Right, I think we've we've blabbed on quite a bit about mm-hmm. this, haven't we? We've covered quite a lot, I mean, and I think it's, it's been, been pretty good. good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. You got any more to say, Pitch? Are you just still singing away? Aside from me, guys, quickly, if you don't mind me asking you, is you know we know we know we've been massively disappointed with player services, but uh, you know I'm I'm watching Rory McIlroy playing in uh, Connecticut here, and when you see these guys rolling up and um, uh, Dustin Johnson and uh, Spieth and all these guys coming up and Phil Mickelson, and you just see the services wrapped around them, you know that's also where we wanna we wanna really go to what. What are the what are the most important things that you guys need at at, at events to to be at your best? I mean, we talked about schedule and all that stuff, but what, what what would you say is is really lacking and that you'd really love to see improved? I think for me, definitely like food and stuff. Mm. Like if you go to a tournament and half the time it's just inedible. Um, it's yeah, either it's not not good or it's not healthy or I mean it's. Yeah, so definitely that yeah. that'd be my first point. Yeah. Yeah, that was gonna be my first thing because I mean a lot of the time if you go in the package now, we end up you end up spending more money by eating in restaurants because you're not getting what you need yeah. um from the food and very limited and you know, quite often you go in and even if it's a buffet, you'll, you know, you want to take a bit of pasta and someone looks at you and says, that's too much. Um, yeah. and of course you, you know, you order in a restaurant, you get, you get a set amount of a meal, but normally that's quite a good amount. Um, yeah. so food is certainly one thing. Um, and accommodation hotels, again, I guess if you go to bigger cities, you, 
you can access more, but some of the tournaments are sort of out in the sticks and things and there's yeah. only one possible hotel available and I remember, you know, there's I no the, Bulgaria last time. And, um, yeah. And I tried I went in the package, thought, you know, there's a hotel about five minute walk. I thought oh, I'm going in that. I got there and they said, Oh, that was full. I was about a forty minute drive away. So I might, like I mean it was ridiculous. You know, having to go back and forth between between matches, forty minutes drive, it was a bit Yeah. Too yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah, you need to be close. You need to be close, that, don't you? Yeah. I think they're the main two things. And like you said, if the schedule's changing, I think now with how the schedule is, the the players' room there needs to be somewhere at the venue, like Pitch said, you if you've got forty minutes to go back rather than spending, you know, both there and back an hour and twenty in a bus or in whatever, um, when you've only got a three hour break, you're gonna stay yeah. at the venue and and at the minute I mean, there's always signs for players' rooms, but you get there and there's there's a table with a little water fountain next to it and maybe a couple of apples. Yeah. And then and then a chair or something. And yeah. You know, there's nothing there to sort of say. You know, have a bit of a have a bit of a rest. Are you laughing at it? <laughs> Sometimes there's not even chairs. Sometimes there's not even chairs, is there? Um, and you and a lot. I was looking for a beer. And and a, well, no, I mean that would help. At least you might be able to sleep on the chair there. Um, but you, but no, and a lot of the times for me, a lot a lot of the times for me is that the players' room is is in the corner of the practice hall. Mm. Yeah. And for me, you're trying to get away from, you know, you, you're going for a rest and all you do, you sit, you sit back on the floor, resting your head against the wall and you're thinking, <laughs> Just all, I can, all I can hear is, bing, you know, the balls yeah, yeah, having yeah. away and, and you can't get away from it. So again, you know, hopefully then they actually probably come. So you don't need them if yeah. the schedule improves and it's a lot better. Mm. Um, but even so, they'd be, it'd still be nice to have somewhere on site where if you go to a practice in the morning when you're playing in the evening, you know that, you know, just after it, if you, if you want to, you can sit and you can do some even stretching or something. There should be an area where, and, and yeah. warm up areas. I mean, it's, you know, now it's, it's hard to practice and it's hard, there's no space on the tables. You constantly, there's, there's six, that's what people don't see at home as well. There's, there's six there's anywhere between six to 12 players sometimes on one table trying to warm up you're there a couple of hours before and you you hit you're trying to practice and there's just no space and even within that you then sort of there's people warming up in and around the tables a lot of the time sort of physically warming up running around and for me I'd, i have no idea how there's not more accidents in that yeah um but again if schedules change which as you're saying they are that becomes a bit easier as well because if there's only four tables in most events or different things, less then players. less players in, in you know fighting for them tables. But I think you make a point there in terms of the schedule, you know, and I guess it would be. Do you think it would be a, a mixed bag? You know, some players will definitely go back to the hotel, but some players might want to stay in a chilled out lounge and just just crash out for twenty minutes. Yeah, different I think so. I have think different needs, won't they? I think sometimes you you don't you won't want to be in your hotel room for too long at any time. So d- different scenery, but you may be also thinking, you know, I'll go in, have a bit of a chill out, and in in sort of the environment. But then I'll I'll go on into the hall, and yeah. again, I think the more options, the better. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And that there will there are very strict guidelines now from from the bids and the license around this stuff. Um, Again, it might take us one, two, three years to truly get to where we want to be, but but certainly the food and and so on is has to be has to be uh, submitted in advance for a nutritionist that we're going to use and, and get yep. all that. Make sure that the core elements of of the diet are in terms of proteins and carbs and and fats are are apportioned appropriately and fruit and vegetables and all that and and vegetarian and halal and all this yep. different stuff that's required these days. Um, yeah, for sure. Anything else jump to mind? Are those the two? Food, hotel, lounge, relax, recovery? Practice all. Yeah. Practice all was in there, yeah. Um, Practice all, yeah. What's it like you guys playing in like, um, like, you know, some of the events are such big arenas. And I think this is one thing with World Table Tennis where it's going to be more condensed in. Because if you take a look at like Wimbledon, imagine if the Table Tennis events were in that sort of style where you could have 
you know, a bit like the London World Cup where it goes upwards and just one table in the middle. Probably be more enjoyable for players. Like, it must be difficult sometimes in the middle of a hall with like a yeah. football pitch size before there's any spectators, you know? Yeah. I, I think th- that, yeah, go on, pitch. Make the atmosphere definitely better, more... Yeah, it's more focused, isn't it? More, you know, if you've got a massive hall, you know, sometimes you've got tables either side of you. It's a bit, you know, it's you just feel like you you're out there, but you're not actually playing in front of anyone. Hmm. Yeah. And I'll probably give because you're not most more... of the time. But it doesn't matter whether there's one table or not at the minute. You're not playing in front of anyone. <laughs> but that, that's interesting, though, from a motivational point of view. Um, you know, even me when I'm playing a local league match and I'm like, let's say I get to the final of the Bristol and there's like 50 people watching, you feel different. You're like, oh, this is cool. Mm. There's people watching. I'm, I've got energy now. I've got adrenaline and it might help create more personality amongst the players. You know, sometimes when you watch on TV, it's like, well, these guys are having a good time out there. You know, you, yeah. you, there needs yeah. to be energy. And, and hopefully with these new events, like you're saying, Johnny, it's going to be more condensed inwards and then players are going to feel more part of it and hopefully more personality comes out. Yeah, yeah. I, think I mean, so. one of one of the things that we're exploring, but it depends on our partners and the licenses and bids. But you know, squash did it. Squash took the the glass cage that you'll have seen in Manchester, but they also went in front of the pyramids. Yeah, yeah, and they dropped yeah the, amazing. They, yeah, and they dropped the box into uh, Central Station, New York. So, so we think with one table, as long as it's got the the, the, the space around for you guys in the field of play, with all the cameras and everything else, you know, the fans it could be a two three thousand arena. Doesn't have to be eight, nine, ten, yeah. twelve thousand anymore. It no. can be compact. Look at Ali Pali again, uh, and yeah. for the world ping pong or the darts, and um, that could be anywhere. You know, could that be in a could that be in a club in Ibiza? Could it be in Sydney Opera House? Could it be under the Eiffel Tower? Could it? Mm. You know, yeah. could it be in Trafalgar Square in London? You know, with one table. Okay, there's the practice table and all. There's the logistics, of course. Yeah, that, yeah. That, 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 that creates put a box challenges down the road. <laughs> <laughs> But but with we need to explore this to be able to really position the sport in a in a wow factor, you know. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, that's I think a lot of people would look at that and say, oh, you know, how can that work? And you know, but again, I think you know we all need to open our minds yeah, to absolutely. to a change. If you know, people talk about it and moan that table tennis isn't get, you know a popular sport and it isn't doing this and it isn't doing that then we all need to look at ourselves and individuals and, and try to make some sort of difference and open our eyes and minds to, to these ideas that in the beginning might seem a bit crazy. But actually, you know, even if it gets tweaked down the line and figure something in the middle or some, you know, then, you know, it can really work for the sport. Mm. I think and one of the first challenges we face is 2021, right? So the Olympics and Paralympics yeah. move. Yeah. Rosanne now is going to gonna move. What does that mean for Houston? two worlds before the Olympics, yeah. that doesn't seem, so there's, I know the executive committee are, are looking at that and what does that do? And then, and then where does world table tennis fit in around that? You know, maybe there's six, eight, 10, 12, 14 events next year rather than the 34. But, but again, it, we're trying to take something completely new and push it into a new yeah. stratosphere. So it is going to take a bit of time. 2021 yeah. feels like a recovery year. Um, and then maybe 2022, we can really start to, yeah. to layer in the, the, the yeah. progress but we do whatever gets launched next year needs to be done reasonably well it needs to show that it's that it's decent and it's going in the right direction you know like any new product if if mars brought a new chocolate bar out they'd want it to be pretty decent in the first year otherwise you know it doesn't yeah launch that's well. yeah so i know, that, that's, I know that's the big thing mm, i know we're going on quite long guys and i know some music get going but you know like in football they've managed to make a product now look like you're nodding off there dan sorry, no, but... sorry no. <laughs> this is something that i see a lot on the the forum recently um trying to work out how we can actually make a table tennis event in this coronavirus time so for example you've got Dusseldorf masters is there any is there any potential items we're going to try and do an event where like the football right now is on is there a way that we can get an event and then you know every, everyone's at home they can watch it and that's different though, is in the Premier League, because the people are living at the clubs in, in this country, yeah. so they're not. It's the travel, I guess, Johnny. I, the travel restrictions and things. It's that's probably more of the challenge at the minute. Mm. Spot on. So national stuff's easy to do. Sign me up, Johnny. Give me a job. <laughs> You're on it. Um, <laughs> and it's the international travel. You know, if you guys couldn't all of a sudden just jet off, if there was still the risk of the 14-day quarantine either side, yeah. and although that's going to change for the good. 
but yeah, it's that it's that international. So we are looking at regional hub events. You know, you read about New Zealand and and, and Australia creating their bubble, their own travel bubble that yeah. players may be able to go there. Asia might be the same. So China, Singapore, although Korea Republic, I think, had some more cases last week or 10 days ago. But, but we are looking at potentially doing hub-style events where players can can go go and, and play. I mean, at the minute, we, we've still got Czech, Bulgaria, Austria, Sweden, the two World Cups, men in Dusseldorf, women in Thailand. It's, you know, Bulgaria have, can, have cancelled. Um, Czech's in discussion at the moment. And, and we're taking month by month to try to yeah. get something on because you know you guys want to play the girls want to play the referees need to be at the coaches need to work the fans are looking for stuff the media want stuff um yeah this whole thing is causing travel travel chaos tricky 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 times yeah it's- yeah. Right, I think we should end it there, lads, because we we'll be go- we'll be here all night, and Bailey will be shouting at us. We're missing him tonight. He normally cuts us off when we need to. Yeah. But we've, <laughs> gone, we've, we've blabbed on a bit, but hopefully Bailey will be back with us next week. Um, he's all right, is he? Yeah, he's all right. He's, looking yeah. at the Liverpool shirt from Liam, was no, that? He, <laughs> I think he knew about it before I did. Right? You know, I, get me off this show. Um, <laughs> No, but yeah, hopefully he'll be back with us next week. And thanks, Johnny, for your input. Oh, and pleasure, guys. Pleasure. Oh, show was great. Well done. Love it. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, we say hopefully Bailey will be back with us. And thanks, everybody, again for watching. Yeah. Cheers. Have a good Cheers, week, guys. guys. Thanks, have a everyone. Good week. Keep, keep those training videos coming, guys. Cheers, Johnny. <laughs> Cheers. See you later. <laughs> you never walk alone. Uh-huh.